Hey everyone, in this video we will be learning about collection view item selection event using MBVM pattern then letting the user to go to a details page whenever each item is selected. So let's get back to the video itself in order to learn. Alright, this is my brand new Xamarin Forms app. So I'm just going to set my uh, iOS project as my starting project. So let's get back to the collection view app. Here you can see we have a main page and I have already told that we'll be using MBVM pattern. So we are quickly going to make a folder name as model and view models, view models and uh, our views, right? So I'm just going to make a view and here inside view, I'm just going to make a file name as something like my page my home page all right so my home page is going to be there and i'm just going to make a page another page name as uh, my page a and i'm going to again make uh, my page name as b all right so what happens is like i'm just going to transfer from my home page to page and page b whenever the collection items are selected inside my home page so let's get back to the app.jaml.cs and set our navigation page and then new main page so what i'm going to do is just click in app2 and then I'm just going to set my home page as my starting page then our my home page is going to have one collection view it has item template data template so it has internal controls so we are going to add level text as something we are going to take it from our view model all right so text color as black so that we it is recognizable vertical option as uh, vertical text alignment as center all right so center so binding binding is something we are going to take uh, from our view model all right so now collection view has item source so the same thing it is going to take all its item from the uh, list of objects from our view model all right so another thing that we have to add collection view dot layout item layout linear item layout orientation as vertical so you can use grid view item layout too so uh, i'll just give the collection view documentation in my video's description below and you can just have a look into that so we know that our main my home page is going to be binded right binding context equals new then we are going to create a view models as my home page view model my home page view model so my home page view model is going to be inherited from bindable object all right so let's go to the bindable object and uh, inherit that thing up so uh, now our work is over now we are going to make a model class for our list of items so we are going to create my home model model my home model so model has something called as string uh, that is uh, property name property name and another as integer as uh, uh, integer as uh, uh identifier identifier okay so my home has identifier as well as the property name so whenever i click on identify number one then i should go to my page a and whenever identify number two will be there then i should go to the uh my page b then how it's really done so i'm just going to bind my home page to the view model all right so that's all 
Then let's go to the code behind of our view, view model .cs. Let's create list of items that is private observable collection. So it should be observable collection. I just mistyped it. Let's create a private observable collection. So it should be observable collection that inherits from system collection object model. Then we are going to create observable collection that is a list items. Then I'm just going to give a name as this one and I'm just going to make public observable collection of same thing that we just need to copy it down then I have to make it as this way and then get that thing inside the getters as well as setter get get that thing up and then have to copy that and set it so that our UI list items get chief phrases whenever any property changes and equals my order items return return it so I just missed it so, my order items equals value then on property change all right so that's it now we are going to create a list of item over here so identifier is uh, one and property name is equals to go to page one all right so let me just copy it identifier as two and go to page two all right that is page b and now I just need to add a semicolon and let's just see whether we, we can populate the items or not inside the collection view item so uh, we know that our view model is going to send the information to the view and this is how our uh, information gets sent using the item source then our next work is to bind the items that is uh, what it, we are going to send that is the property name we are going to send right so let's go to over here and then label is going to get the property name that's all now it should see, we should see our application running all right so i'm just going to start my iphone 12 mini ios so let's wait for some time till we get our output so correctly we got two output that is go to page one as well as go to page two so whenever these items are selected then we have to go to either page a or b so in order to do that we are going to tell that item that was selected as selected item so it is a bindable one binding so what is the item that is going to be binded that is selected is going to be uh, seen inside this that is public public and then my home model this is the object that is going to be selected my selected item so this is going to either get as well as set so uh, I'm just going to copy that and then put it below over here and then we shouldn't disturb this line of code and my selected item is going to grab all the contents that is required so now we have a command binding that is selected selection change command so we are going to add binding my collection selected selected command all right so this command is going to be again called over here because we are going to send that information by this command that is that the list item is selected so public i c u i c u and i command and get that command over here that's all 
now this command is going to inherit from Xamarin forms command with async as well as await operations perform navigation all right so that's all so navigation is going to happen to specific pages so let's go to our next and the final step is either to go to a uh, page a or page b so if my selected item equals null that is whenever there, there is a null item then we have to return it or else if my selected item return null all right so private async then we have to avoid that operation we have to just return it that's all if the, the, the item is selected as null that is whenever the item is selected then uh, we don't need anything so whenever that identifier equals one then we are going to page a else if we have identified as two then we are going to some other page so in order to perform our basic navigation from our view model so we have in order to perform a basic navigation we have navigation command as like this so now we are going to let the user to a new page that is my page my page a and then we are going to let we are going to inherit that my page a then we are going to let the user to go to my page b my page b so let it be await operation let it be await so now let's see whether our whole code works or not so i'm rerunning the app back again so that we'll just see whether our whole application works fine or not and we are able to go to either page a or page b or not so this is my expected output so whenever i click on each of the items that is go to page one i'm just clicking it up and you can see the command binding is not working as of now that is selection change command is not working that's uh, i'm in xamarin forms 5.0.2012 so we should report the bug to xamarin forms team uh, because that's it not working fine now let's do a temporary uh, uh, work workaround if that is working for you then uh, well and good and it should the whole code should work and let's do a temporary solution over here here i'm doing grid dot gesture recognizer tab gesture recognizer is tapped and we have a command property we just uh, don't want anything to do over here and command parameter this is just temporary workaround binding dot then this the thing that you have to add over here is uh, you have to add the name for that collection view because we are going to take a reference then binding path equals uh, the path that we will be using uh, over here is binding binding context dot what is the command that we will be using over here is my collections uh, selected command that we will be using over here and giving it a source so uh, we need to add a source property over here source is source is x reference and the list that we will be using and uh, that's it finally now let's remove this two line of code that we used previously because we are not going to use it and then uh, we have to move towards our uh, view model and then we have to perform one operation that is uh, generate navigations all right so you can just add any name as you like but here i'm just going to add that same name and uh, now the next thing is we are going to add that whole line of code over here as async await and our object is going to give us all the items 
right so we don't need any type of selection item over here we don't need that whole line of code then uh, our next thing is that selected item item equals obj as what is the item that was uh, sent to the uh, the uh, collection view item this is the item that was selected so now uh, we can get the identifiers from here and then navigate the user to the corresponding page that's it so if it was working fine for you then you don't need to perform this step now let's run the app and then see whether our tab gestures are working fine or not so whenever i click on this thing yeah great so we got our selected item over here you can see over here and the identifier is one that's why i'm navigating towards the page one so this is the page one that i i know gets uh, it gets navigated and then uh, or smoothly it gets to navigate it to uh page b whenever it's selected so you can see over here it gets navigated to page b that's it so that's all for this now tutorial now thank you guys thanks for watching keep in touch for our next tutorials